This Week in IT. Microsoft announces new Surface devices with Snapdragon's X Elite and X Plus chips that are set to rival and even beat Apple's M3 SOC. Plus, there are 20 new Windows and ARM devices being launched by partners this summer, and there's a new Windows AI feature coming that's already causing controversy. So stay tuned to find out more. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I discuss everything about Azure, Microsoft 365 and Windows. This episode is sponsored by our friends at Semperis. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 86% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. So if you'd like to see this weekly IT update, then please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on the latest uploads. So you're probably already aware that Windows on ARM hasn't been very successful as a platform. And that's largely because the hardware just hasn't really been able to keep up up and to perform in the same way that Apple's M1, M2 and now the M3 chips are performing. I'm not going to go into too much detail about all the technicalities of it because we've already covered that on this channel and I'll put a link so that you can go back and have a look at that video. But last year Snapdragon announced a series of new chips that are going to power the new generation of Windows notebooks and desktops that are coming this year and they're going to at least perform form as well as Apple's hardware, which brings Windows in line to macOS, of course, on ARM hardware. Now, why is all of that important? It's important because of energy efficiency and battery life. These new devices are going to allow you to take your notebook out somewhere and not have to worry about recharging it maybe for nine, 10 hours, even more, and get great performance without being connected to the mains. And of course, we know that just isn't the case with today's Intel PCs. And existing ARM hardware for Windows just does not perform well and hasn't been really very well received by users or reviewers. The new hardware that's coming this year also brings new opportunities for Microsoft to update Windows with a whole load of new AI features and we're also going to talk about that. But before I talk about what Microsoft said about the new Surface devices and what it's announced for Windows at Build this week, here's a quick message from our sponsor. Did you know that Active Directory is exploited in 9 out of 10 cyber attacks? Once cyber criminals control your Active Directory, it's game over. With access to AD, attackers can gain control of your entire network. And if AD goes down, business comes to a halt. And it's not just on-premises Active Directory that's under attack. Cyber criminals are targeting Azure Active Directory too. Attackers can gain entry in the cloud and move to on-premises identity systems or vice versa. To keep threat actors out, you need to find and fix Active Directory security gaps. Meet Purple Knight, your ally in defending against adversaries trying to breach your hybrid Active Directory environment. Purple Knight is a free Active Directory security assessment tool built by some Paris identity experts. With Purple Knight, you can spot Active Directory vulnerabilities before attackers do. Purple Knight scans your hybrid environment for hundreds of indicators of exposure or compromise in both on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. Purple Knight gives you an overall security score and prioritized remediation guidance for fixing AD security vulnerabilities. This week is Microsoft Build and they also had a device event this week to launch two new models of the Surface Pro and Surface Laptop. Now these devices are going to be starting at 999 US dollars and they'll both be available on June 18th. Microsoft is claiming that the new Surface Pro should be 90% faster than the Surface Pro 9 and that the new Surface Laptop models are 86% faster 
than the previous generation. Microsoft will be launching these new devices with Windows 11 24H2, which is the next big update to Windows 11. But at the time of launch, they won't contain the new AI features that Microsoft has been talking about at Build this week. They will be coming in the fall. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the technical details of these devices, but they're going to be called Copilot Plus PCs, and they're coming with the Snapdragon X Elite ARM processors from Qualcomm. And in terms of performance, Microsoft is saying that you can get 22 hours of local video playback and 15 hours of web browsing from these machines. Not only will these two new devices be available on June 18th, but on the same date, 20 partners will be also launching new Windows devices based on these Snapdragon X Elite processors. And of course, from previous videos and I'm sure information that you've already read on the internet, we already know that these processors perform at least as well as Apple's chips and that they bring uh, MPUs with AI performance that we've never seen before on Windows. Intel and AMD are not being left out of the party. They're also going to be bringing Copilot Plus PCs later in the year, but we don't know much yet about the performance or what they're going to look like in terms of how they will stack up to what Snapdragon is offering. This week it's also Microsoft Build, so they've been talking about Windows and what new AI features are coming later this year for Windows 11 24H2. Now the biggest, well really the only really completely new feature here is called Windows Recall. And this has been causing a little bit of fuss in the press. Now, Microsoft have kind of hinted in the past about this technology that they were hoping to bring to Windows. And it's a local technology. It doesn't use the cloud. So it's using that new MPU support that's coming in the Snapdragon and in the future Intel and AMD processors. And essentially what it does is it takes a screenshot of your desktop every few seconds it analyzes what's on the desktop and it allows you to basically search a timeline of those images using natural language. So this week at Microsoft Build, the program manager for this feature demonstrated a couple of different scenarios. One where she'd been shopping for a dress but didn't actually make a purchase. And then she was able to use Windows Recall to describe what the dress looked like that she'd been looking at in some internet shop. And Windows Recall was able to find that dress and then take her to the website so that she could buy it. Another example that she gave was a PowerPoint presentation. She wasn't quite sure where it was located, but she did remember that, well, it is PowerPoint and that it had some purple text on the slides. So she was able to basically ask Recall to find it. And then it was able to open that presentation in PowerPoint. Now, this is something that I've always wished that Windows had some kind of history. Of course, we've had Windows timeline in the past, which really relied on developers to really support it. And that was eventually removed from Windows. That was a complete failure, a complete disaster. Nice idea. This is really taking that idea a step further. So while at this stage, in terms of taking you back to an application, it only supports Chrome-based browsers and Microsoft 365 apps, it doesn't require any developer support to make it work. It can just essentially look at whatever you have on the screen, regardless of the application, analyze that content. And of course, using the AI smarts that are going to be built into Windows and that hardware, provide a really quick search experience that's going to get you to where you need to be. Now, Microsoft is saying that you'll be able to choose whether to enable this feature as you install Windows and that there will be enhanced privacy controls for consumers and IT departments. Because the big worry about this is all the information, of course, that's storing locally. What if that device gets hacked? The hacker could, of course, get access to a whole minefield of information that was never previously stored on your device. So that's something that maybe you should also consider. Moving on, Microsoft is improving a couple of AI features that are already available for users that have the right hardware. So we're getting live captions with translation for up to 40 languages, and we're getting improved studio effects with things like 
portrait lighting, creative filters, natural looking eye contact and enhanced noise cancelling and background blur. Of course, Windows Studio Effects is designed to help you have better and more productive meetings. Paint and photos applications are getting something called co-creator built into them, which is going to bring a whole new load of features for retouching photographs and creating graphics to Windows. So you'll be able to use text prompts to generate new images in near real time. And there'll be a restyle image feature that you can use to restyle personal photographs by combining image generation and photo editing in the Photos app. Now we've been waiting for this new hardware for a long time. You know, this announcement about the Snapdragon chip uh, when Qualcomm purchased this technology, it's already several years ago. It's been a long time in the making. The new AI features coming to Windows, that's a little bit more controversial, of course, especially with Recall. I think anything like this is really about just evaluating risk like anything in business really. Is this something that is going to provide uh, the productivity enhancements that you expect it to? And is that enough to outweigh the potential risks of storing all of that extra data on the device? Now, of course, you could argue, well, Windows is more secure than it's ever been. And well, that may well be true, but it's not completely impenetrable. Of course, there is no system that is 100% secure. So the more data you keep on a device, you know, of course, if it does get hacked, then you know, it's, you know, potentially open to the hacker to access all of that personal information about what you've been doing. Now, Microsoft is saying that you will be able to delete snapshots from the timeline if there's sensitive or personal information that you just don't want it to store. But that's something you're going to have to kind of go through and find manually. Uh, Microsoft is saying, of course, that you've got all these technologies built into Windows now that make it very secure, like the Pluton chip and all of the encrypted disk technology that's built in uh, that will be enabled with this feature as well. So you don't have to worry about somebody just ripping the disk out and pulling out those images. So these are all things that you need to think about. I think this feature is going to be pretty useful. I mean, I can imagine using this. We use various different systems at work that are not connected. So using Windows Recall to find information so that I don't have to think about where did I see that information. Windows will just know and take me back to that place in time. And even if it can't open the application, if it's not supported at this stage, at least I can see what application and where in the application that information is located. So for me personally, I think it's going to be really useful and I think for lots of other people too. Now, I can't wait to get my hands on one of these devices. It's probably not going to be a Surface. I'll wait to see what the partners release later this summer and I'll think about getting one maybe later in the year because there's going to be a whole load of stuff coming down the line that at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to use if you don't have this new AI hardware locally on the device. Let me know what you think about the new ARM hardware from Surface and from partners. What do you think about Windows Recall? Just a gimmick, is Microsoft taking this too far? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you found this video useful, then I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with a video about a great new Microsoft app that's designed to help hybrid teams work more effectively. So do check that out. I'd also quickly like to thank our sponsor, Semperis, before we go. But that's it from me today, and I'll see you next time.